Senator McCann to propose. Um, can I just say, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm delighted to be given the opportunity tonight to open, well it's not really tonight, it's afternoon really, um, to open the, the adjournment debate. And I just want to first of all say that, you know, whenever we, we talk in this uh, assembly and, you know, we, we have been talking a lot about our children and young people, that all of our children and young people deserve and not just deserve, they're all entitled to equality of opportunity to whatever career path that they do decide to follow in or whatever lifetime choices they make. And we've often heard that having a good experience in our education and lives, right through from nursery provision to further education, contributes to our overall personal development and growth, and that having a bad experience can very often ha have a negative impact right through into our adult life. And I know I've spoken to many people you know, who had a, a particular experience at school and that actually followed them in um, and, and had an impact right through their whole lives. Therefore, it is very important that in our formative years, and particularly our time at school and other educational places of learning, that we do have those positive experiences. We are seeing more and more evidence that links um, deprivation, poverty and social exclusion to underachievement and poor educational outcomes for our children and our young people. However, when this is recognised and focused learning interventions and focused support mechanisms are put in place, this can actually enhance educational attainment even in areas of high social and economic deprivation. And very often we need to see those early intervention programmes you know, at an early stage in a child's life or a young person's life. And I think that it's very, very important to say you know, that, that we can then raise the educational attainment of that child or that young person. The West Belfast Community Education Programme is an innovative project that works closely with local schools, teachers, parents, community providers, and the children and the young people themselves. And the main driver for that programme in West Belfast is the West Belfast uh, Partnership Board. And I want to actually you know, commend the Partnership Board for the work that they've done for years in this field um, right across West Belfast. And indeed, you know, the, the, the real life experiences, and they've turned children and young people's educational attainment, not just their educational attainment, but they've also you know, given them the personal um, development and they have you know, really changed some of the, the young people's lives and indeed some of their families' lives. It supports a shared learning approach which sees the importance of a child-centred approach to education and it being uh, in, in a way to make a real difference in those educational outcomes that we, we all need to aspire to and we all need to see. It incorporates key priorities identified by the Department of Education and the West Belfast Partnership Board together and they include early years development and the importance of family and parental engagement that focuses on developing increased aspirations of the family for their child. And for me, that's a very, very important key element in all of this. I think you know, we, have to, we have to ensure that the, the parents of, of the child and the young person, and indeed you know, uh, the care of the young person, they have to have that aspiration for that young person as well, because there's nothing will, that will sort of, you know, get a child to, go, to get on in life and, and, and to, to actually do their best. Um, that more than if they're getting that support and that encouragement from parents or peers and everything else. So I think it's very, very important that, that we, we actually um, increase that as well. It also looks at raising literacy and numeracy standards and provides support for post-primary pupils to improve GCSE attainment. And I have to say, I have actually witnessed it, and I know my, my colleagues here, my party colleagues with me, have witnessed this for several years um, at the Easter and Summer Schools that the West Belfast Partnership um, uh, actually put on in St Mary's Co uh, University College in West Belfast. And we've also seen it in, you know, in terms of, we've seen hundreds of kids um, which initially came from the West Belfast area, but you know, who are now coming from all over Belfast. And basically, they're coming, they're giving up their free time of their Easter holidays and their summer holidays to go in to try and do better um, at their exams. And also, we have a transition, they also have a, a, a transitions program as well that you know, brings primary school children who are transferring to post-primary school and it makes that you know, much easier, that transitional period for those children as well. So I have to say we've all seen it at first hand and see how it works. 
A report by the Department of Education in September 2014 uh, looked at children and young people who attended schools in West Belfast and, identified, uh, and uh, did identify the area of, of one of deprivation where, where the children were at a disadvantage in regards to their educational opportunities. The report went on to say that following a number of intervention programs, there were increased levels of school attendance and improved GCSE results. And I just want to, to you know, give a, a flavour of the, actual, the, the way those results did increase. There was an increase of 11.4% of pupils in West Belfast achieving five GCSE grades A star to C from 2011 to 2015. And there was a 12.3% increase of pupils achieving five GCSEs, including maths and English, from the figures released in 2013 in comparison to the results in 2015. And when we look at pupils eligible for free school meals, those are even, the, attainment, uh, the, the increase in the attainment is even greater. There was a 12.2% increase of students achieving five or more GCSEs at grades A star to C level in 2015 than in 2013. There was a 14.3% increase of students um, eligible achieving five or more GCSEs at grades A star to C, including maths and English, in 2015 than in 2013. And there was a 17.3% percent increase of students eligible for free school meals, achieving seven or more GCSEs at grades A star to C in 2015 than in 2013. And I have to say that's a spectacular improvement right across the piece. And I, it, has to be, it has to be given that, you know, while there, there's a lot of uh, different drivers in, in terms of, of getting that educational attainment up, one of the key drivers was that partnership approach that was there and that was driven by the West Belfast Partnership Board in their education programme. So I, you know, I, I want to make that very, very clear that that, that was one of the key drivers. Um, there, there, as I mentioned earlier, the Eastern Summer Schools that take place, which sees the hundreds of young people giving um, up their free time. But it also, the programme also puts an emphasis on a joint up approach to look at how you know, the consistency of the transition from nursery to primary and to post-primary. And again, you know, that isn't just about you know, the, the, the West Belfast Partnership part in this. It's all around the, you know, all stakeholders in education, the Department of Education, all the schools, the teachers, the parents, and uh, as I said earlier, particularly the children and the young people themselves. Because it takes that holistic approach, and I think that, that that's what we want to see going forward. We want to see that very, very clear holistic approach um, in terms of delivering you know, improved uh, educational outcomes and working uh, on that focus of effective interventions and interventions also you know, that, that are measured and are evaluated because the, it actually this is where it works. And in a sense, you know, we do hear we do hear about you know all all the sort of efforts that we make to to actually you know to get to the root causes of underachievement, and we all you know we, we've re rehearsed them in this in this chamber, and we, we've talked about them in the community as well. And I think that that really you know we know that you know uh, if you're from a, a socially or an economic deprived area, or if for whatever reason you know your your family isn't as affluent as another family, you know that those those sort of uh, those issues impact on your education, they impact when you're at school and they impact on your achievement and we need to have that holistic approach because, go back to my central point, it is the entitlement in my, in my view of every child to have the same lifetime opportunities as another child and it shouldn't matter you know, what that child's social background is, what the child's economic background is, they all have that entitlement, and particularly they have that entitlement in education. And I will say they have it right through, not just in, in getting ready for school, but also going through nursery school, going through primary school, post-primary, and to further education. So I suppose for me, I wanted to, to actually, you know, just illustrate the way in which that partnership approach to education, which involves the whole community, which involves everybody, actually does have the, the benefits and the positive results that I have just, I have just outlined. And it's not just about, uh, I have to emphasize, it's not just about, you know, kids getting their exams and getting that educational 
uh, attainment up. It's also about the confidence that that gives those young people. Because I see it myself. You know, I see them coming in, and you know, they're 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 they're, they're so uh, full of you know, really full of confidence when they have actually achieved this, and they feel you know the, the, their social exclusion. It goes down, their sense of themselves and their confidence goes up, and that can only be something that we all want to aspire for our children. So just to say to the Minister, you know, I'm very happy for to see you here today. I'll be listening to what other people have to say. And just to, to sort of way ask you, you know, what your intentions are about continuing programmes like that, because I think that you know, you've got something here. It's a good model of practice. We've seen it working in an area of social deprivation and economic deprivation and we really really appeal to you you know to make sure that those programs continue on not just in West Belfast uh, minister that they are you know uh, brought out into wider Belfast and even beyond it, um, and, and give that uh, sense of achievement to our young people and children thank you um, members will have up to five minutes Aaron sir Alex Atwood I call Alex Atwood uh, uh, thank you uh, mr. deputy speaker uh, could I thank uh, uh, Jennifer McCann for bringing this motion to the uh, chamber tonight and welcome the fact that the minister is here. And the reason I say all of that is because the, the motion and the debate is actually very timely because we are now closer to the eve of the publication of the programme for government. And in my view, when it comes to West Belfast and other areas of need and disadvantage, the PFG has to be a paradigm shift and a paradigm shift when it comes to educational uh, uh, provision and support for those about to go into and at school. Um, could I concur with uh, uh, Ms McCann that um, the, the uh, uh, achievements of our schools and other educational interventions in West Belfast is immense. There are great schools, there are great results, there are great interventions and there is great community uh, initiatives when it comes to education. But at the same time, if you go through West Belfast, and this is my experience uh, in uh, April, May and June on the Shankill, and in parts of West Belfast, Lower Shankill, in parts of West Belfast, uh, in months before and since. There are areas and communities where the people believe, or too many people believe, that uh, the power of the state, the work of political parties, the interventions of all range of public bodies is not going to change their objective experience. That they feel that whatever the state and others might do, it's not actually going to work for them. And that's a, a, a sad narrative uh, uh, this long after ceasefires and this long after the devolution of uh, government. So when it comes to educational provision, these are the questions that I want to put to the Minister. And in that regard, I'm just anticipating the meeting that I'm having with him next Tuesday afternoon, where these will be some of the issues that we will need to touch upon. Because if we don't shape a paradigm shift, then there's a risk that those people in those communities who feel the way that I've outlined will feel that more intensely. So here are the measure, in my view, when it comes to educational provision in West Belfast that will define the future different from the past. The first is that if we don't have a comprehensive strategy around those who are not the six in terms of embracing the child and taking care of the child, the family, the parent and the grandparent up to the point uh, when they enter into nursery and formal schooling. If we don't have a paradigm shift in that regard, in terms of educational and other family and child support, then we will not be able to change more fundamentally the circumstances that are experienced in communities in West Belfast. Uh, we need to borrow from the Scandinavian model, or more accurately from the New Zealand model, when it comes to provisions and support for those who are newly born, up to when they enter into nursery education, and when they enter into primary school, across the range of all those who interface with that, uh, that, that child. And as part of that, if you are not making adequate provision for childcare uh, for uh, parent or parents with young children when they are in school or about to go into school, 
then you will not be able to deal with comprehensively with the needs of that family and maximise the opportunity of that child when they're in, going into education and going through education, not least in West Belfast. So my question to the Minister is, will there be a paradigm shift when it comes to the North 6 strategy? And will there be a paradigm shift, shift when it comes to, um, comes to uh, 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 childcare? And my third challenge to the Minister, and this is where you'll have to join up with other Ministers, uh, if you look at the most mature economic development policies in these islands, they have targeted strategies that bring enter entrepreneurship and enterprise into the school estate. That's what they do. They have uh, school uh, programs, enterprise programs, whereby people in the school system, this includes West Belfast, are given all sorts of opportunities to develop an enterprise to close, and entrepreneurial culture. Um, those are some of the measures of a paradigm shift, and I look forward to hearing what the Minister has to say in that regard. Here, Sir Jerry Carroll. I call Jerry Carroll. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I want to thank the member for bringing this uh, to, the, uh, to the floor. Um, this is an important issue, and, and one of the issues that uh, we hear about in regards to educational services in our constituency the most is that of uh, classroom assistance for statemented children. And increasingly, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we are hearing about the devastatingly long waiting times for children in need of statements to receive them. Uh, these waiting times have detrimental effect, not just on the children's educational needs, but as we are hearing from parents in West Belfast, the waiting times are having detrimental effects for the well-being of the children and for their families because of the undue stress they are forced uh, to endure. And when eventually statemented, we hear too often about barriers these children face and actually getting the assistance that they need. Uh, special needs and uh, autistic students have to fight to get the amount of educational assistance they need and deserve. And people before profit think that this is, this is shocking, a shocking state of affairs. And the journey their parents face to get their children the warranted amount of help is a long one, riddled with undue stress. And, uh, and we know, Mr Deputy Speaker, that the blame does not fall at the feet of the classroom assistants employed to help these children, because as often as we hear from parents of children with learning difficulties, we hear from classroom assistants about how under pressure they are. And indeed, a recent Unison, uh, Unison Trade Union article articulates just how under pressure, undervalued and underfunded they actually are including having the fight to secure permanent contracts, which is now a pipe dream for most classroom assistants. And they, they are understaffed in a way that affects their uh, already huge workload. And the lack of job security, uh, the lack of hours, uh, coupled with increasing workloads, can have harmful effects on school ch children, as we have heard from members of, of our constituency. And most of the members here uh, in this chamber will be aware that in the past, classroom assistants have had to take industrial action against the executive in the fight for better working conditions and job security. And they may well have to be forced to take industrial action again in the future to fight for better working conditions and, as a result, better learning conditions for children who are currently being let down and left behind. And if they do choose to take industrial action in the future, um, they'll have the full support of people before profit and I hope others in the chamber. And, Mr Deputy Speaker, I don't raise these issues today um, simply just to highlight them, because if I'm inundated with horror stories, I'm sure uh, others uh, in this chamber and from West Belfast are as well. But I think what we need to look at is the, the other issue of impending amalgamations and further cuts, which will have a drastic effect uh, and people are concerned about uh, in West Belfast in particular and across uh, constituencies. So again, Mr Speaker, I don't raise these issues uh, simply to highlight them. I raise these issues as a stark warning to the executive that if they don't get off their hands, listen to those on the ground and alleviate the situation, then those on the ground will no doubt make the changes and be forced to make the changes themselves by taking action. And if they are forced to do so, and I would encourage them to do so, I'll be there supporting them. Because unless something is done, classroom assistance 
vulnerable children and the community of West Belfast as a whole will continue to be let down. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call William Humphrey. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I rise to speak as a member for North Belfast, um, but as a governor of two schools in the Greater Shankill, and I declare an interest in, in both of those. Can I say that um, I welcome this debate and I thank the, the members for bringing it. Um, before I came here, I spoke to some of the principals in some of the local primary schools, uh, and I, I want to pay tribute to the principals group in the Greater Shankill for the work they've done, for the leadership they've given the teachers, the governors, the parents, and of course the young people themselves for the, the results that are now starting to emerge out of Shankill. And very clearly there are improvements that are, that are happening there, and I very much welcome that. But what they said to me was the three things that they see as important are the importance of the continuance of the funding for targeting social need, the effect of social deprivation and social difficulties. And of course all of these, and I agree with that, all of these are linked to uh, socio-economic difficulties that prevail, paramilitarism, deprivation, social uh, uh, inclusion or exclusion. And I think, as other members have said, the, very, the key around this is early intervention, not just in education but in all aspects of government. But I welcome the joined up approach that we've had in Shankill. Those of us who are local representatives for the area have joined together with the Agreed Agenda Group, with Jackie Redpath, who is Chief Executive of the Greater Shankill Partnership, uh, taking the lead of that along with Nicola Werner. The Greater Shankill Partnership, led uh, for, until recently by Thomas Scott, for the, 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 the leadership that the Partnership Board give, and of course, Integrated Services, again, led by Nicola Werner. The Minister will know that there are potential of three new primary schools in Greater Shankill, one on the upper part, which will involve uh, Spring Hill and Black Mountain, one on the lower, which will involve potentially Edenbrook and Malvern, and of course, the new Glenwood Primary School. And I very much welcome the development of the, and the funding that has been provided and the current construction as the, the school comes to its um, conclusion of the new nursery school at Lanark Way for Edenderry. That actually is the first phase in the new Glenwood Primary School and I look forward to the Minister making an early decision on the funding for Glenwood and, and a new school there. But in 2005, if you look at uh, Springfield, and I want to look at Springfield as an example, I remember attending a meeting in Springfield Primary School in 2005 when I was a councillor uh, for court, and there were 74 pupils there. The school was failing, and, and ed educational achievement wasn't great. Last year, I had the honour of opening an extension in that school. There are now 176 pupils there, and that school is doing tremendous work in, in, in terms of young people who are progressing to secondary education, many of them into grammar schools. So, you know, the, this is good news, and of course, that's all in the primary sector. I also then want to move on to talk about the secondary sector. And in recent times, I was only a few weeks ago invited to go back uh, to, to my old school, Boys Model, uh, to their presentation day. And I was amazed at the, the standards and the improvement that there have been. And there were five days, I only was able to attend one, but there were five days of presentations. And I have to say, as I attended the senior school presentations, the, the advances that have been made there, the, 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 the uplift in terms of educational achievement, the confidence and the competence of those young people uh, uh, is absolutely amazing. I also attended the girls' model presentations and was delighted to see such a great um, movement forward there as well. And the leadership uh, in, in, in those two schools by Alan Logan and Emlyn Wright, uh, respectively, has to be commended. Unfortunately, I was, uh, was invited and wasn't able to go to the, the uh, Hazelwood College a few weeks ago because of a, a public meeting I'd organised in, in my constituency. But I know, Minister, you did attend and, and we're, we're greatly uh, impressed by it. But I have to say that as we go forward, the challenges that, are, that face North Belfast and West Belfast, and there are many of them the same challenges right across because the constituency is divided by the Shankar Road, are faced by the, the, those young people. And I, I'm encouraged when I speak to, to, to uh, principals and those in leadership of the CCMS and the work that's going on uh, around schools in North Belfast to see that generally there is an improvement. And I think I would commend the, the department for the work that has done um, in, in the area. But in particular, I want to commend teachers. Often teachers are criticised, uh, and, and as a governor in, in, in two schools, as I've said, the governors are hugely indebted to the hard work of dedicated teachers, and when a school is led by a very good and dedicated principal who's determined to turn a school around, I think that makes a difference. So I want to pay tribute to, 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 to the work that's been done. I 
I want to pay tribute well, to, the, to, draw some marks too close, yeah, to the to agreed agenda group where the parties meet. So the action zone that has been established, the action zone has made a great difference, and that sort of joined up governance really is the key and the solution, in my view, to dealing with the problems that exist in West Belfast and North. Thank you very much. Call on the Allen. Speaker, and can I thank the proposer of the motion for bringing this, uh, this adjournment debate before the House. It's a very important adjournment debate, and indeed uh, I enjoyed the fact of having the opportunity to speak on a previous adjournment debate brought by the member in January. If I might also, Mr Deputy Speaker, declare an interest as a voluntary trustee of an organisation um, who provides uh, community-based and alternative education packages to individuals and also as my wife is a teaching assistant in a local primary school. So I know only too well and I know firsthand of the difficulties that teaching assistants and, and teachers face on a daily basis. And I would like to take this opportunity to commend and pay tribute to those teachers, not just in West Belfast or North or East in my own constituency, but right across the province who day, day and daily go above and beyond to support our, our, our children. And as a father myself with two young children uh, in uh, early days of, of their primary, sco primary school education, it's very important uh, and imperative that we centrally involve uh, parents in the education of our children. And indeed, I very much welcome the opportunity where, when I can go to the school for my children's review uh, and be able to complement um, the work of the teachers and indeed the classroom assistants to support my own children. And indeed, I, I think it's something that, that I would hope the Minister will continue to look at that refuse uh, and indeed the parents being involved centrally in their children's education is a cornerstone of going forward. And indeed, education is a fundamental human right and essential for the exercise of all other human rights. It promotes individual freedom and empowerment and yields important development benefits. It is a powerful tool by which economically and socially marginalised adults and children can lift themselves out of poverty and participate, participate fully as citizens. It is well documented, however, that not all of our citizens do well uh, in the educational setting, whether that be um, primary school, or secondary school or indeed college. I, and I would also like to uh, place on record my admiration for those community-based uh, and alternative education programmes who have set up and went out of their way to support those who have not been able to um, fit into the education setting in school uh, in the way that they perhaps hoped. And indeed, the proposer of the motion uh, made mention of those bad experiences in school. Uh, and, and I am testimony to that, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I, I was an individual who, as a fault of my own, and I will not attempt to place the burden upon anybody else, found myself slipping down a path that I necessarily did not want to. However, when it became evident that I did not want to go down that path, I had slipped down that slope too far. And I'm very much grateful to the Link Centre, uh, a centre which indeed um, encompasses the Open Doors programme, because they got me back on the path and the journey that I needed to be going down um, to achieve a, a, a degree of proper educational attainment. And indeed, that's what led me to choose a career and a path in the military. Some might say, look at, look at you now, that wasn't the, the, the right career, the right path, but I would do it all over again. And, and I, I, I wouldn't hesitate and I would do it in a heartbeat because it's created and shaped me into the person I am today. Mr. Speaker, in finishing, our uh, Deputy Speaker, I, I would like to offer my support. And indeed, I know in this chamber at times, and indeed um, yesterday, things can get slightly hot and heavy between the opposition and the executive parties. However, as an opposition, indeed, my party leader said, we, we will be a constructive opposition and we will work with the executive where we can. And this is one area I feel uh, very passionate about, and I will work with the Minister in any way that I can to support our young people. So thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Item, sir, Colin McGrath. I call Colin McGrath. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I welcome the opportunity to speak on this uh, adjournment debate today as second generation West Belfast and uh, also as um, you know, the education spokesperson for the party. Um, and also, I think that the issues that affect West Belfast, whilst they're maybe more acute in West Belfast, they do impact other constituencies as well. So the issues that are being raised here today, whilst constituency specific, uh, do reach out to other places across the north. 
But looking at West Belfast, Mr Deputy Speaker, I was certainly shocked whenever I found the statistic that 38% of people in West Belfast hold no qualifications at all. And I have to say that I think we are doing a bit of a disservice if we have that amount of people that are only being educated up to a certain level. I think we do need to review it and take that step back and say, what could we be doing better? What could we do, be doing in a more joined up approach to try and deal with the issue? And also, maybe to take my particular slant in, in looking at this, um, I don't think that the issue solely lies with the schools. I, I think there really are some very, very good, good schools in West Belfast, some leaders uh, in education in that area. And if we look at the, um, the inspections, we can see that all of the post-primaries in the constituency have achieved a, a satisfactory rating or higher, and all but one of the primary uh, it was deemed satisfactory and higher. So schools are being rated very highly in the area for the work that they're doing. But I think if we look at the wider picture and we can look at maybe some of the other uh, things that are happening within the constituency that are negatively impacting on the education of our young people, and I think if we could look at an area that has 39% of children living in poverty, and that's a stark contrast to the Northern Ireland average of 21%, and it's a constituency where the life expectancy expectancy of men is 74 and women is 80, both of which are the low, some of the lowest in Northern Ireland. So it has the, some of the highest rates of people on disability benefit. And I think that we can assume from that that there are children that are a significantly higher proportion of children that are undertaking caring responsibilities within the home as well. So I think that we need to support and improve health services within the constituency as well uh, to try and um, re restrict the, the negative impact that this is possibly having on children and their education. Um, I would also always say that we can invest in youth services and youth clubs in West Belfast, which would greatly enhance uh, children in the area. It would give them good positive role models, give them positive engagement. There are lots of services there, and I'm sure if they were enhanced and strengthened, that that would be able to help support uh, the social and personal development of young people, all of which would help to raise self-esteem, as was referred to earlier, uh, all of which could contribute to improvements within the classroom environment. And then also if we look at the things, and, and not to underestimate the impact of things such as breakfast clubs and homework clubs, breakfast clubs which I think show uh, under evidence that they set young people up for a good day at school and help with their concentration levels, and then homework clubs which afterwards can help some young people that maybe can't get support at home with homework, giving them that support, giving them into the classroom, giving them the pride that their homework is completed. So if there are initiatives like that in the area, I think they should be continued to be supported, and if possible, if they could be rolled out a bit more. Um, I think that there, 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 there are many issues, but there are lots of solutions, and I think if we can do all that we can to kind of draw them together, we should hopefully be able to make an impact and to, to reduce that underachievement that there is in West Belfast. Aram Sir Pat Cheehan, I call Pat Cheehan. Well, I welcome the opportunity to speak on this debate tonight. Uh, West Belfast gets a lot of uh, bad publicity. And the previous speaker mentioned some of the issues, you know, the highest rates of child poverty, lowest life expectancy, uh, highest unemployment at various times, uh, all of that, uh, one of the most depraved constituencies. Yet if a stranger arrived in Belfast and asked to be directed to the top achieving school at A level in the north, where would they be directed to? Straight to that area, right to the Falls Road in the heart of West Belfast, St Dominic's, top achieving school at A level. Also, on the Falls Road in West Belfast, you have College of First Year uh, already bursting at the seams. They're undergoing a £14 million uh, refurbishment and redevelopment at the minute. But when that development is complete, they're not going to have room for all the, all, all the children that want to go to that school. <clears throat> and it is already one of the top achieving non selective schools uh, in the North. By the way, it's also the largest. Uh, post-primary Irish medium uh, school on the island of Ireland. And, <clears throat> um, I've talked about this before in the chamber. Uh, the research that was published or was released here in the, in the long gallery just before Christmas last year, a piece of research called School Inspection in a Polycentric Context. And the theory behind that is that individual schools on their own can only reach a certain level of achievement. Uh, but when schools collaborate and cooperate together and there's an overarching inspection, all results can increase. And the, 
That piece of research was carried out at the behest of Erasmus under the auspices of the West Belfast Partnership Board and was conducted by academics from DCU of Dublin. So, Jennifer McCann has already referred to the results of that. An increase of 14.3% uh, at GCSE level among children on free school meals. The district ins inspector from the Education and Training Inspector, Dr. Paddy Shevlin, described that as spectacular. And it is spectacular. And I defy anyone to point me to anywhere else in the North where that type of leap in attainment has taken place. So, what have we got in West Belfast? Well, first of all, the children and young people in West Belfast are no more intelligent or no less intelligent than children anywhere else. But it's clear that something different is taking place. And there's a template there, uh, and it's all in that report uh, on the polycent polycentric inspection. And what's happening is that the uh, area learning communities have been established at nursery, at primary, and at post-primary level where schools are working and cooperating together, where problems in the, in the system are being identified. So there are problems in transition years from uh, nursery level to primary and from primary to post-primary. So the area learning communities are working to ameliorate any problems that exist there. So the teacher from the local primary school comes to a nursery school for a few weeks before the end of term or a month or whatever it is. The children get to know her. Uh, or him or whoever it is, uh, and it makes that transition all the easier. Similarly, uh, uh, projects are carried out at transition years from primary to post-primary. And of course, the Easter schools, uh, we all know how important uh, English and maths are at GCSE level. Without English and maths, uh, it's very difficult for kids to move on to third level education. Uh, so, what, what do the Easter schools do? They identify children who are sitting on a borderline CD at Maths and English, and they get that week of intensive tuition in St Mary's University College. So children are being brought into a university setting. Uh, they're being given intensive tuition for a week. The results are phenomenal. You know, 78% pass rate at Maths, 82% pass rate at English. Uh, this is what's happening in West Belfast. Uh, I know the Minister is aware of it. I know he was chair of the uh, Education Committee when the Partnership Board came in and presented on it. Uh, and I know he was impressed by what he heard. And I'm asking the Minister uh, to continue to fund uh, this type of uh, cutting edge work that's happening uh, in education in West Belfast. We'd and have the to have it rolled out rolled out elsewhere. So uh, uh, I just want to thank Jennifer McCann for bringing the motion and ask the Minister to continue on with the funding. I now call on the Minister for Education, Mr Peter Weir, to respond. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. First of all, I'd like to thank Jennifer McCann for bringing um, this issue to the floor today. It's the opportunity to discuss educational issues, but also particularly to highlight the important role that all of us have as a community to ensuring that our, our children and young people achieve full potential. And I think, um, as uh, Pat Sheehan has, has indicated, I mean, there, there have been tremendous success um, in terms of changes in terms of academic achievement. And I think that is something very much to be celebrated. Uh, but I think, as the proposer of the uh, German debate also indicated, uh, in addition to the academic successes, it's also going beyond that. It's about ensuring actually that children can reach their, their full potential. I welcome, I think, the tone of the debate, which I think has been very positive, and is right. While we highlight, and I think a number of members have highlighted um, important issues, which I hope to be able to address, but also that we do take a little bit of time also to celebrate the achievements and the efforts of people who are working on the, the ground, be it sort of um, within schools or indeed within the wider community. Uh, and I think embracing that, that positive note. Um, generally speaking, I think all the contributions were fairly positive. I, I appreciate uh, possibly slightly playing the stereotype, there was a, somewhat of a call to the barricades by people who were profits uh, on, on that basis, and I'm, I'm sure it's glad to know that the solidarity will always be there uh, from people who were profit on all occasions. Um, but generally speaking, I think the, the contributions have been very positive. You know, it is the case that if we're looking to achieve full potential, that 
Evidence of, of securing that outcome can be particularly challenging where there are areas of, of high deprivation, and particularly has been highlighted by a number of speakers, particularly in areas such as West Belfast. But we also know, um, and we've highlighted, it's been highlighted today, that, that where there is appropriate and timely support, positive outcomes can be achieved. Uh, now, I'm encouraged to think by the level of improvement and attainment of our young people um, that are residents and indeed across in this, both this area and across Northern Ireland, and as uh, someone who's been Education Minister for the last um, four and a half months, I, I take complete credit for that, uh, rather than uh, in any way sort of uh, suggesting that the, the, there was any good work done uh, prior to uh, my appointment. Uh, but in all seriousness, I think the benefits in education um, can be beneficial to the economy, education can be deeply beneficial to community, but probably particularly it's been beneficial to the individual. It can be the, the one great life-changing uh, experience. Um, I, I was almost reflecting, I thought, um, in a very positive contribution that Mr. Allen uh, made, that uh, at one stage he was maybe going to have the warning, if you don't study hard at school, you're in danger of ending up as an MLA. Uh, maybe that should be a degree of uh, warning across our education system. Uh, but I, I thank him for uh, the positive contribution he made, and indeed, I think on a range of these issues, I think there can be good work um, across the chamber. Uh, you know, I'm determined as much as possible to take action to break the link between social disadvantage and educational underachievement. You know, while recent statistics demonstrate a continued upward trend in the performance of school leavers, there's always going to be a need to address low performance and where there are significant gaps between uh, our most and least deprived uh, pupils. So I'm totally committed to targeting resources wherever they're needed most. Um, can I say, from that point of view, and I know a number of members have sought assurance that, that we continue to continue on with these projects and indeed the funding, and that's certainly something that, that I'm very supportive of, particularly as when it comes to the rollout of that. I think that will also be very useful. And can I particularly, looking at some of the members um, opposite, if, if there's any good words that they can have with the finance minister, um, it will be particularly, uh, your intervention will be particularly appreciated. Well, sorry, I'm happy to give way. Thanks. And, and uh, you know, I'm glad to hear that you're uh, certainly willing to look at these projects and the continued funding of them. But I also wanted to ask, I didn't have enough time during my contribution to mention nurture units. And of course, they're not, they're not unique to West Belfast. Uh, and I'm not sure if there has been an official evaluation done, but certainly the anecdotal evidence coming back is that they have been uh, you know, a phenomenal success, and I would ask the Minister to consider funding for those. Yes, I'm, I'm very happy to deal with that particular issue. I'll, I'll come on to that in a moment. Um, mentioned me, and I think, for instance, uh, Mr Atwood raised the issue particularly of the 0-6 situation as regards early intervention. I, and it's undoubtedly the case that um, the best level of, of intervention is where you're getting that, that early intervention, and particularly in terms of a not the six strategy. And so if, if, if I'm looking probably particularly at two priorities in terms of funding in what are difficult times, it's about firstly trying to ensure that we get the maximum amount that's directly on the frontline service of our schools, but also then allied to that is as much protection and indeed expansion where possible uh, of funding at, at early intervention. Uh, one of the things that, that certainly I've, I've visited both the West Fast uh, Partnership Board and also the Children's Zone um, within the, the Shankill. And one of the things that very much struck me is that there is a, a building of work that is happening from year zero upwards uh, in both those, those areas. And I think an acceptance that there needs to be that um, early intervention. Specifically, and this is where I think one of the areas that um, particularly West Fast has been a, a leader on, um, Mr. Shane mentions about the, uh, the issue of nurture units. There has been an evaluation actually recently been done by Queen's University, which indicates um, the high level of success that has been there. And in terms of nurture units, not simply for the children going through the nurture units, but there's been a sort of a whole school improvement where that, where that has happened. Uh, and certainly I would look to mainstream that, that funding, see what expansion can take place within that. But also I've given an assurance to those 32 nurture units across Northern Ireland that until we're in a position to announce any degree of new scheme for nurture, that their funding is secure within that. Very specifically, I think um, West Belfast has been at the cutting edge of this, and I think there's been five awards um, on a UK-wide basis that have, that have affected Northern Ireland in terms of nurture awards. Um, and two of those five, Holy Trinity and uh, St Joseph's at State Street, um, are actually the recipients in that. And I know um, uh, shortly before I became 
Minister, I think, and Mr McCann, I think, was there uh, as well at State Street. Uh, it was tremendous to see, actually, the, the, the spirit of pastoral care that has been developed by nurture units. And, and it is about having that level of intervention. Um, you know, so I've made funding available, the department's made funding available to early years providers and schools throughout the area. And very specifically, I suppose, mention has been made um, in terms of some of the direct interventions in West Belfast. There's been a total of 56 schools that currently qualify for extended schools programme funding. I know Mr uh, McGrath made reference, I think, to some of the good work that happens through um, the breakfast clubs, through the homework clubs. There's been specific mention through the West Belfast Partnership Board of the uh, particular sort of the, the focus in on Easter examinations on that basis. I think it was also a very valid point that Mr McGrath made that, that, um, that it's, it's not simply what happens in the classroom. Uh, mention was made of the, um, the levels of educational attainment within West Belfast and we have a particular adult population uh, where there has been perhaps too many people without qualifications. I think there's two answers to that. First of all, to try to ensure that the next generation, that we don't have that particular problem. But also, I think, through work on a multi-departmental basis, if we're looking at further education, if we're looking at intervention on that basis, it's not simply to write off those who don't have qualifications, and I think there needs to be intervention there. There's also been, within West Belfast, £385,000 has been made available to support the Full Service Community Network Programme. And indeed, in terms of school age childcare grants, has been awarded 340,000 uh, to nine childcare settings. Now, um, Mr. Atwood, I think, raised, raised the issue in terms of the children's and young people, uh, people strategy, which is something we're hoping to bring forward reasonably soon. That will be has got to be aligned with the PFG, and there is a he's right in terms of major challenge there. The challenge, I think, particularly to the executive as a whole, because there's going to be a step change. Realistically, it's not going to be something which is going to be able to be funded directly from within the Department of Education. It's got to be a wider commitment. Uh, yes, I'll give way briefly. I know it doesn't directly relate to West Belfast, but a recent issue that's been brought before me is employers for childcare solutions and the difficulty they've had incurred um, as a result of having to now pay VAT on the childcare services. Will the Minister give an undertaking to work with the Department of Health to, to look at that issue, as I know they're involved also? I'd certainly be happy to, to look at any issues even if it's outside my department. I think in terms of particularly VAT, I suspect that may be as regards to maybe national decisions which may lay outside our control, but certainly I'd be happy to, to look at that. Uh, I'll give away briefly, yes. Hello. The point you raised about um, uh, interdepartmental work, given the uh, opportunity to pool funds further to Stephen Agnew's Act in terms of children's services, are you indicating that across departments there will be pooled funds? in order to deal with children's needs and services? There is a, an active group within, indeed, concentrating between the department, between Department of Education and Health and how we can actually improve outcomes uh, arising out of that act, but also actually arising out of some of the other legislation that was passed through. So, for example, on the Special Educational Needs um, Bill, whenever it went through, there was a range of, of um, amendments even put within that to try and secure that. There's also, I think, and this comes back, uh, touches on the members of one of the other members' other main points on entrepreneurship. I think there's a strong work, particularly as we look at the curriculum, in a need to work between the Department of Education and the Department of the Economy. Also looking indeed at simply that we don't have a silo mentality as regards schools, but we look towards um, further education colleges. Can I say, just as mentioned in terms of the entrepreneurship, there is support from the Department um, in relation to productive relationships between schools and employers. We, we do fund the Young Enterprise Scheme. We also, I think, are working closely. I was at a session last week of business in the community. And what I've seen, particularly in somewhere like West Belfast, there's a very strong linkages, I think, between employers and local firms and schools. And so, for example, I was at the um, Ashley Awards. Um, Tim said maybe it was, I thought one stage was going to be called the O'Mullier Awards, but um, I was at the Ashley Awards recently where there was a very strong commitment that has been seen. And a, I think a, a tremendous example to other communities of a degree of buy-in um, in terms of entrepreneurship and, and that sort of thing. So that also is an important issue. Turning to, I think, a few of the, the other issues, I would commend particularly the work. I had the opportunity, as I said, to visit the partnership board actually before I was minister. Um, was maybe a little bit of a, a DUP chair going in a private capacity. To wealth. There was a side element of Nixon in China quality to it. But I was incredibly impressed by what was happening there. I've also had the opportunity to visit the, um, in terms of the children's zone with, from the, the Shankill side of it. And I think there's very good work. I think particularly within both communities on the issue of transition is important. I think sometimes it's a neglected 
uh, quality within that. To pick up on a, another couple of the points that have been raised, uh, Mr Humphrey raised the, the issue around early intervention and indeed the support for that, um, again, that can be provided also by way of new school build. And I'm glad to see that the Department uh, have pushed ahead with that. I mean, it's, it, it's clear that in terms of the contribution of this debate, it goes well beyond the boundaries of, of West Belfast, even if we have some sons and daughters of, of West Belfast contributing uh, as well. Can I suppose say also in, uh, in relation to that, um, that I think that uh, turning, for instance, in terms of the, uh, the Greater Shankill Zone, one of the, the, the key lessons which I think arose from that, that, this is not the first initiative which has taken place in the Greater Shankill. What I got certainly in terms of interpretation from uh, those directly involved, it was whenever it was focused in and indeed driven from a grassroots up quality by way of community. And the same from the West Belfast Partnership Board, that we got the highest level of, of buy-in. Um, and from that point of view, I, I'm keen to see those, uh, those developing. And indeed, it is also, I think as Pat Sheehan indicated, um, it is also actually in terms of the very positive outcomes, one that we're seeing sort of a level of collaboration and coordination, both between schools, but also then between education achievement and the rest of the, uh, of the community. In terms of buy-in, it is also vitally important, I think, as the proposer of the German debate uh, realised that there's not simply that buy-in from the community in general, but particularly that there's buy-in from parents. And I think where we see parents taking a view of a, um, that are aspirant for the children to try to deliver, which we do see in, in West Belfast on it, I think that that is something which is also of, of considerable um, advantage. Clearly, in terms of, uh, I'm keen to support the work that is, that is ongoing. I intend to work closely with schools, early years and childcare providers, youth service, which is sometimes always the Cinderella quality to this, educational stakeholders to ensure that we can meet the, the needs and aspirations. As with a lot of things, I have that commitment. The opportunity to do this as, as best as possible will also be, to a certain extent, driven by finance in that regard, and uh, the greatest support that we can get from the executive as a whole. There is much good of an innovative uh, practice, and I think that in much of what is happening in West Belfast can serve as a, uh, as a role model for what's happening elsewhere. And I think even in terms of that sharing that degree of practice, I see time is, is uh, counting against me. But I think overall, I think within West Belfast, between communities, between education sectors, within education sectors, uh, and across the board, I think we've got to continue to work collaboratively, to share this expertise, to support teachers and school leavers, because I think uh, school leaders, because I think the, the leadership that is provided within schools can be absolutely vital. Um, and I think to do that, to raise the overall standards of attainment, is something I think all of us should be aspiring to. And I think in the collective spirit, I think that Mr. Allen indicated of government and opposition, at least on this issue, working closely together, I welcome that, that, that spirit uh, in relation to that. Thank you for that. Um, the Assembly is now adjourned.